Hello and welcome to another information-packed video from ACE Courses. Let's discuss the combined oral contraceptive pill or the COC in this video. What chemicals does the COC contain? How does it work? What are the different ways of taking the COC? What are the benefits? What are the complications? What are the contraindications or the reasons you shouldn't be taking COC? How should COC be taken? What should a woman do if she misses a pill? Let's answer these and other important questions in this episode of 10 Questions to MRCOG Mastery. Let's start with the basics. What does the COC contain? Well, it contains two active ingredients, a synthetic estrogen and a synthetic progesterone. A synthetic estrogen is ethanyl estradiol, often abbreviated to EE. A synthetic progesterone is called a progestogen. The synthetic progestogens that are used can be first, second, third or fourth generation drug. An example of first generation progestogen is norethisterone. An example of second generation progestogen is levonorgestrel, often abbreviated to LNG. Examples of third generation progestogens include desogestrol and nogestimate. And examples of fourth generation progestogens include drospirinone and dynagest. Most combined oral contraceptive pills are monophasic, meaning that they have a fixed dose of ethanol estradiol and a progestogen. Some combined oral contraceptive pills are bi or triphasic, meaning that they have varying levels of hormones to mimic a natural hormonal cycle. Such multiphasic COCs or combined oral contraceptive pills are supposed to have better side effect profile but the evidence to support their use is limited. Question 2. How does the COC, the combined oral contraceptive pill, work? There are three mechanisms by which COC acts as a contraceptive. The primary mechanism is through prevention of ovulation. COC works on the hypothalamic pituitary ovarian axis, resulting in the reduction of the hormones FSH and LH thus preventing ovarian follicular development and ovulation. The second mechanism is that the COC makes the cervical mucus thick, making it difficult for the sperm to penetrate. The third mechanism is that the COC makes the lining of the uterus, that is the endometrium, thin, making it difficult for an embryo to implant. We are on to question three. What are the different ways of taking a combined oral contraceptive pill? We have the standard way of taking the pill and the tailored way of taking the pill. The standard use is taking the active pills for 21 days and then having a 7-day hormone-free period, often referred to as HFI, hormone-free interval. In terms of the tailored way, there are four different ways of taking the pill. The first is the shortened HFI regimen, in which 21 days of active pill taking is followed by just four days of hormone-free period or HFI. The second tailored way of taking the pill is called tricycling, in which three lots of active pills are taken continuously Thus, it is 21 times 3, in other words, 63 days of pill-taking, 9 weeks of pill-taking, active pill-taking, followed by an interval of 7 to 4 days of hormone-free period. The third tailored way of taking the pill is the flexible extended use in which the active pills are taken for more than 21 days for a variable period of time to suit the needs of the woman Say it could be taken for four weeks, five weeks, or six weeks, followed by four to seven days of hormone free period. The final tailored regimen is continuous use, in which there is a continuous daily intake of the active pills. Although tailored use of the combined oral contraceptive pill is outside 
of the manufacturer's license. Such use is supported by the Faculty of Sexual and Reproductive Health in the UK and can be offered to women as part of broadening the options of contraception. Question four, what are the benefits of the combined oral contraceptive pill? Well, the first and foremost benefit, of course, is that it is an extremely effective contraception. The second benefit is that it is very effective in reducing menstrual bleeding and menstrual pain. In other words, menorrhagia and dysmenorrhea. It can also reduce the symptoms of premenstrual syndrome, in other words, PMS. Use of the combined oral contraceptive pill is also associated with their reduction in three cancers, ovarian cancer, endometrial cancer, and colorectal cancer. The combined oral contraceptive pill use is also associated with their reduction in functional ovarian cysts and benign breast disease. Finally, studies show that there is a reduction in pelvic inflammatory disease, or PID, and this could be due to thickening of cervical mucus, thus diminishing the risk of ascending infection. Question 5. What are the risks or complications associated with the use of the combined oral contraceptive pill? There are the general medical risks and there are cancer risks that one needs to be aware of. Medical risks include a very small increase in coronary artery disease, a two-fold increase in ischemic stroke, and a three- to six-fold increase in venous thromboembolism. Risks of two cancers, breast and cervical cancer risks, are increased with the use of the combined oral contraceptive pill. The increase in the risk of these two cancers is small, and the risk reverts to background risk after about 10 years of discontinuation of the combined oral contraceptive pill. Question 6. Who shouldn't be using the combined oral contraceptive pill? In other words, what are the contraindications for the use of COC? First is a personal history of venous thromboembolism, then a family history of venous thromboembolism in a first degree relative under the age of 45 years, known thrombogenic mutations, history of ischemic heart disease, stroke and hypertension, liver disease example cirrhosis, migraine with aura, estrogen-dependent tumours, major surgery with prolonged immobilisation, first six weeks of postpartum period in breastfeeding mothers. Now, what about smokers? Well, smokers over the age of 35 should not have the combined oral contraceptive pill. In non-smokers, as long as there aren't any other contraindications, combined oral contraceptive pill can be continued until 50 years of age. Let's look at some of the practicalities of taking the combined oral contraceptive pill now. Question number seven, how should you start the combined oral contraceptive pill? Well, if you start the COC in the first five days of the menstrual period, then you have immediate contraceptive cover, which is great news. But if you start the combined oral contraceptive pill after five days of menstrual cycle, you cannot expect immediate contraceptive cover. So you will need to use some additional contraception, like say condoms, for the next seven days. With surgical management of miscarriage or termination of pregnancy, the combined oral contraceptive pill can be started on the same day as the procedure or the following day if the patient has got, say, postoperative nausea or vomiting. Question 8, an important one. What should a woman do if she forgets to take the combined oral contraceptive pill? It depends on whether she has missed just one pill or more than one pill. If she has missed just one pill anywhere in the pack or started the new pack one day late, she is still protected against pregnancy, so all is good. She should take the last pill that she missed, even if that means taking two pills on a particular day, carry on taking the rest of the pack as normal, take the seven 
eight-day pill-free period as normal and she doesn't need any extra contraceptive cover. What if she has missed two or more pills? If she has missed two to seven pills anywhere in the pack or started the new pack two or more days late, then contraceptive effectiveness cannot be guaranteed. What she needs to do depends on how far into the pack she is. She needs to make three important decisions. Firstly, is emergency contraception needed? Secondly, is extra contraception needed? And thirdly, what should she do with the pill-free period? Exactly what she does depends on how far into the pack she is. I've created a table for you that contains all the relevant information and this is really important. So what I suggest is that you take a, a screen grab now and perhaps even print it and put it up on the wall so that you can commit this to your memory. This is really important. So make sure that you take the time to do that. Question number nine, what drugs may interact with the combined oral contraceptive pill? The problem drugs here are enzyme-inducing drugs which can increase the metabolism of both estrogens and progestogens, which can then decrease the efficacy of the combined oral contraceptive pill. Liver enzyme-inducing drugs include some anti-epileptic drugs like phenytoin and carbamazepine, some antiretrovirals like ritonavir and nevirapine, and some antibiotics like rifampicin and rifabutin. Women using enzyme-inducing drugs should ideally switch to an alternative method such as copper IUD or levonorgestrel IUS. Question 10. What should be the follow-up for someone who has been started on the combined oral contraceptive pill? A 12-month supply of combined oral contraceptive pill can be given at first visit. But if there are any concern, a review can be arranged at three months. And finally, a bonus question, question 11. What advice will you give to someone who is on combined oral contraceptive pill if they are due to have a surgical operation? Well, the concern here is with major surgery. For major surgery, the combined oral contraceptive pill should be stopped for four weeks before the operation and an alternative contraception should be arranged. COC can be recommenced two weeks after return to full mobility. Excellent. Well, that is the end of the masterclass on the combined oral contraceptive pill. We hope you found it useful. And until we meet again in another video or perhaps at the intensive MRCOG weekend course from Ace Courses, we bid you farewell and have fun with your revision. 